Hello guys, welcome to my channel Serology. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss the lateral earth pressures on retaining walls. This is number 4 video related to designing of retaining walls. Before this video, we have discussed some basics of the retaining walls before we going to start the designing of retaining wall these basics are very important in order to design a retaining wall so if you haven't watched the previous videos you are requested to please watch that videos that will definitely help you in designing of the retaining walls as these are the basics if you don't know the basics you will not be able to design a retaining wall similarly this video is also one of the basics of the designing of the retaining walls and we will discuss the different earth pressures on retaining wall as you can see over here uh, which is called as passive earth pressure active earth pressure or at rest earth pressures and there are few formulas which we uh, we will also discuss and you will have to learn and remember these formulas to design the retaining walls so let's start our today's topic Uh, if we divide the uh, lateral earth pressures, there are three categories of lateral earth pressure and each depends on the movement experienced by the vertical wall on the uh, pressure on which pressure is acting. So basically there are three categories of lateral earth pressure and the wall as I discussed over here the, by the vertical wall and the wall could be basement wall, retaining wall earth support systems such as sheet piling, solid air pile and legging etc. So the three types of earth pressure are at rest earth pressure which is denoted by T naught and the second one is this is the example of at rest earth pressure we will discuss these different three types one by one in upcoming slides. The second one is active earth pressure as you can see over here if you consider this is a retaining wall and this is the backfill material backfill material could be a uh, soil or water retained by this structure and this is the pressure being applied on the wall and active pressure will act in this direction that is towards the retaining wall and the third type of uh, earth pressure is passive pressure and it acts in this direction we will discuss uh, let's discuss these three types in detail. So first type of earth pressure is active earth pressure. The active earth pressure develops when the wall is free to move outward such as typical retaining wall and the soil mass stretches sufficiently to mobilize its shear strength. As you can see over here if this is the retaining wall and this is the backfill material as I told you before backfill material can be water or the mixture of soil and water or the combination of earth, stone, rocks, whatever the retaining material. The, for the, the purpose we are going to construct the retaining wall is to retain the material. The retaining material could be soil, water, rocks, etc. So the active earth pressure is the pressure which move the or you can say which tend to move the wall away from the soil or outward away from the soil and it is denoted by Ta and is given by this formula. Okay. The second type of earth pressure is passive earth pressure and is denoted by Pp. P is for passive similarly A is for active. Okay. And if the wall moves towards the soil opposite to the active earth pressure passive earth pressure is as you can see over here acting is in, that, uh, in this direction and it tends to move the wall towards the soil. Then the soil mass is compressed which is uh, sorry which also mobilizes its shear strength and the passive pressure develops. It is uh, it can be determined by using this formula Tp is equal to gamma h and this formula where as you can see over here this is called lambda and lambda is the density of earth retained as I told you before whether it is water soil or whatever the type of material is it depends upon the density of 
that retained material okay and height is the h h is the height of the retaining wall this is the height of the retaining wall it also plays a very important factor and the third one is angle of repose i will discuss the angle of repose in detail in in my next video but in short i will tell you that the it is the uh, as you can say it is the uh, friction of the material being retained friction between the particles of the material being retained and it is the natural alignment uh, you can say the natural line it adopts with the horizontal as you can see over here here angle of repose is zero if the retained material is in this direction then the angle formed here is called as angle of repose okay we will discuss it in uh, in next video okay and the third type of lateral earth pressure is at rest earth pressure the at rest pressure develops when the wall experiences no lateral movement as i discussed in previous slide that active pressure tend to move the wall away from the soil passive earth pressure tend to move to, uh, the wall toward the soil and the at rest earth pressure as it is obvious from its name that the wall experiences no lateral movement this is the example okay as you can see over here in this picture you can consider it as the bridge okay this is the bridge or you can say deck slab okay so in this condition the walls experiences no stresses or no uh, shear stresses okay and this typically occurs when the wall is restrained from movement such as along a basement wall that is restrained at the bottom by a slab and the top by a floor forming system prior to the placing soil backfill against the wall so i hope you have understand these type of these three types of lateral earth pressures so guys that's all for today in the end you are requested if you are new to my channel you are requested to please subscribe the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates moreover if you want me to make a video on a specific topic let me know in the comments and i will never disappoint you and i will make a detailed video and i will try to explain each and everything related to that topic so that's all for today